Lesson 4 An Everlasting Covenant Sabbath Afternoon April 17 Sorrow filled heaven as it was realized that man was lost and that world which God had created was to be filled with mortals doomed to misery, sickness, and death, and there was no way of escape for the offender. The whole family of Adam must die. I saw the lovely Jesus and beheld an expression of sympathy and sorrow upon his countenance. Soon I saw him approach the exceeding bright light which enshrouded the Father. The anxiety of the angel seemed to be intense while Jesus was communing with his Father. Three times he was shut in by the glorious light about the Father, and the third time he came from the Father, his person could be seen. His countenance was calm, free from all perplexity and doubt, and shone with benevolence and loveliness, such as words cannot express. He then made known to the angelic host that a way of escape had been made for lost man. He told them that he had been pleading with his father and had offered to give his life a ransom, to take the sentence of death upon himself, that through him man might find pardon, that through the merits of his blood and obedience to the law of God they could have the favor of God and be brought into the beautiful garden and eat of the fruit of the tree of life. Early Writings, page 149 our little world is the lesson book of the universe. God's wonderful purpose of grace, the mystery of redeeming love, is the theme into which angels desire to look, and it will be their study throughout endless ages. Both the redeemed and the unfallen beings will find in the cross of Christ their science and their song. It will be seen that the glory shining in the face of Jesus is the glory of self-sacrificing love. In the light from Calvary, it will be seen that the law of self-renouncing love is the law of life for earth and heaven, that the love which seeketh not her own has its source in the heart of God. The Desire of Ages, page 19 Our God has heaven and earth at His command, and He knows just what we need. We can see only a little way before us, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of Him with whom we have to do. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Above the distractions of the earth, he sits enthroned. All things are open to his divine survey, and from his great and calm eternity, he orders that which his providence sees best. Not even a sparrow falls to the ground without the Father's notice. Satan's hatred against God leads him to delight in destroying even the dumb creatures. It is only through God's protecting care that the birds are preserved to gladden us with their songs of joy. But he does not forget even the sparrows. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Matthew chapter 10, verse 31. Testimonies for the Church, volume 8, pages 272 and 273. Sunday. April 18 Yahweh and the Abrahamic Covenant After the flood the people once more increased on the earth, and wickedness also increased. Idolatry became well-nigh universal, and the Lord finally left the hardened transgressors to follow their evil ways, while he chose Abraham of the line of Shem and made him the keeper of his law for future generations. In that age, idolatry was fast creeping in and conflicting with the worship of the true God. But Abraham did not become an idolater. Although his own father was vacillating between the true and the false worship, and with his knowledge of the truth, false theories and idolatrous practices were mingled, Abraham kept free from this infatuation. He was not ashamed of his faith and made no effort to hide the fact that he made God his trust. He builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. If it were not possible for human beings under the Abrahamic covenant to keep the commandments of God, every soul of us is lost. The Abrahamic covenant is the covenant of grace. By grace ye are saved. John chapter 1 verses 11 and 12 quoted.
Ellen G. White Comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 1, page 1092. I am means an eternal presence. The past, present, and future are alike to God. He sees the most remote events of past history and the far distant future with as clear a vision as we do those things that are transpiring daily. We know not what is before us, and if we did, it would not contribute to our eternal welfare. God gives us an opportunity to exercise faith and trust in the great I Am. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 1, page 1099. God's word to us is, I will bless thee, and thou shalt be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. Wonderful, wonderful words almost beyond the grasp of faith. The creator of all worlds loves those who give themselves to his service, even as he loves his son. Even here and now, his gracious favor is bestowed upon us to this marvelous extent. He has given us the light and majesty of heaven, and with him he has bestowed all the heavenly treasure. Much as he has promised us for the life to come, he bestows princely gifts in this life. As subjects of his grace, he desires us to enjoy everything that will ennoble, expand, and elevate our characters. He is waiting to inspire the youth with power from above that they may stand under the blood-stained banner of Christ to work as he worked, to lead souls into safe paths, to plant the feet of many upon the rock of ages. All who are seeking to work in harmony with God's plan of education will have his sustaining grace, his continual presence, his keeping power. The Ministry of Healing, page 405 Monday, April 19, El Shaddai God selected Abraham as his messenger through whom to communicate light to the world. The word of God came to him, not with the presentation of flattering prospects in this life of large salary, of great appreciation and worldly honor. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, was the divine message to Abraham. The patriarch obeyed and went out, not knowing whither he went, as God's light bearer, to keep his name alive in the earth. He forsook his country, his home, his relatives, and all pleasant associations connected with his early life to become a pilgrim and a stranger. Abraham's unquestioning obedience was one of the most striking instances of faith and reliance upon God to be found in the sacred record. With only the naked promise that his descendants should possess Canaan, without the least outward evidence, he followed on where God should lead, fully and sincerely complying with the conditions on his part, and confident that the Lord would faithfully perform his word. The patriarch went wherever God indicated his duty. He passed through wildernesses without terror. He went among idolatrous nations with the one thought, God has spoken. I am obeying his voice. He will guide. He will protect me. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, pages 523 and 524. In its human wisdom, the world cannot know God. Its wise men gather an imperfect knowledge of God from his created works, and then in their foolishness, they exalt nature and the laws of nature above nature's God. Those who have not a knowledge of God through an acceptance of the revelation he has made of himself in Christ will obtain only an imperfect knowledge of him in nature, and this knowledge, so far from giving elevated conceptions of God and bringing the whole being into conformity to his will, will make men idolaters. Professing themselves to be wise, they will become fools. Those who think they can obtain a knowledge of God aside from his representative, whom the word declares is the express image of his person, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, will need to become fools in their own estimation before they can be wise. It is impossible to gain a perfect knowledge of God from nature alone, for nature itself is imperfect. In its imperfection, it cannot represent God. It cannot reveal the character of God in its moral perfection. 
But Christ came as a personal Savior to the world. He represented a personal God. As a personal Savior, He ascended on high, and He will come again as He ascended to heaven, a personal Savior. He is the express image of the Father's person. In Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. Selected Messages, Book 1, page 295. Tuesday, April 20. From Abram to Abraham. Jacob was raised from a man of feebleness and defects through faith in God and prayer to be a prince with God. He prevailed through faith. God is omnipotent. Man is finite. Who of us are really in earnest as was Jacob, who wrestled with the angel with all the energy of his being? Jacob put forth all his strength, supposing that he was wrestling with a lawless opponent. But the Lord put his finger with a divine touch upon him, and the wrestling ceased. Jacob knew that it was the Lord. Then, all broken, he fell upon the neck of the angel and held him, pleading, Bless me, even me, the angel said. Let me go, for the day breaketh. It was now Jacob's turn to make the terms, and he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Genesis chapter 32, verses 26 to 28. This Day with God, pages 104 and 298. God entered into covenant with Abraham and took to himself a people to become the depositaries of his law. To seduce and destroy this people, Satan began at once to lay his snares. The children of Jacob were tempted to contract marriages with the heathen and to worship their idols. But Joseph was faithful to God, and his fidelity was a constant testimony to the true faith. It was to quench this light that Satan worked through the envy of Joseph's brothers to cause him to be sold as a slave in a heathen land. God overruled events, however, so that the knowledge of himself should be given to the people of Egypt. Both in the house of Potiphar and in the prison, Joseph received an education and training that, with the fear of God, prepared him for his high position as prime minister of the nation. From the palace of the pharaohs, his influence was felt throughout the land, and the knowledge of God spread far and wide. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 332. God permitted Daniel and his companions to be taken captive that they might take to the king and nobles of Babylon the knowledge of him, the only true God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. God brought Daniel into favor with the prince of the eunuchs because he behaved himself. He kept before him the fear of the Lord. His companions never saw in his life anything that would lead them astray. Those who had charge over him loved him because he carried with him the fragrance of a Christ-like disposition. God is connected with the threads of our existence. He knows every thought of the heart, every action of the life. Then strive to live in harmony with him. Seek to reach a high standard. Heavenly angels will help you, and more than that, Christ will help you. The Upward Look, page 47. Wednesday, April 21. Covenant Stages. Many are unable to make definite plans for the future. Their life is unsettled. They cannot discern the outcome of affairs, and this often fills them with anxiety and unrest. Let us remember that the life of God's children in this world is a pilgrim life. We have not wisdom to plan our own lives. It is not for us to shape our future. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Too many in planning for a brilliant future make an utter failure. Let God plan for you. As a little child, trust to the guidance of him who will keep the feet of his saints. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9. 
God never leads his children otherwise than they would choose to be led if they could see the end from the beginning and discern the glory of the purpose which they are fulfilling as co-workers with him. The Ministry of Healing, pages 478 and 479. The spirit of bondage is engendered by seeking to live in accordance with legal religion through striving to fulfill the claims of the law in our own strength. There is hope for us only as we come under the Abrahamic covenant, which is the covenant of grace by faith in Christ Jesus. The gospel preached to Abraham, through which he had hope, was the same gospel that is preached to us today, through which we have hope. Abraham looked unto Jesus, who is also the author and the finisher of our faith. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 6, page 1077. To Isaiah it was given to make very plain to Judah the truth that among the Israel of God were to be numbered many who were not descendants of Abraham after the flesh. This teaching was not in harmony with the theology of his age, yet he fearlessly proclaimed the messages given him of God and brought hope to many a longing heart reaching out after the spiritual blessings promised to the seed of Abraham. In the renewal of the covenant shortly before the birth of Isaac, God's purpose for mankind was again made plain. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, was the assurance of the Lord concerning the child of promise. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. And later the heavenly visitant once more declared, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. The all-embracing terms of this covenant were familiar to Abraham's children and to his children's children. It was in order that the Israelites might be a blessing to the nations and that God's name might be made known throughout all the earth, Exodus chapter 9, verse 16, that they were delivered from Egyptian bondage. If obedient to his requirements, they were to be placed far in advance of other peoples in wisdom and understanding. But this supremacy was to be reached and maintained only in order that through them the purpose of God for all nations of the earth might be fulfilled. Prophets and Kings, pages 367 and 368. Thursday, April 22. Covenant Obligations. Abraham is a noble example of a faithful householder, and he has given us an example of the unquestioning obedience that all should render. He who blesses the righteous said of Abraham, I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. They will keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. He will not speak words of hypocrisy or deception. There will be no betraying of sacred trusts. Just as surely as we labor together as Abraham did, so surely will we receive the commendation of heaven. Abraham was, in a marked manner, selected to walk in the way of the Lord, governing his household by the combined influences of authority and affection. The Holy One has given us rules to obey, from which there can be no sinless swerving. We are bought with a price. Faith and works are to make us complete in Christ. Thus we shall keep the way of the Lord. When the heart is meek and lowly, God can impress the soul. The Word of God is our counselor. Let us obey its teachings. The Upward Look, page 249. Obedience is not a mere outward compliance, but the service of love. The law of God is an expression of His very nature. It is an embodiment of the great principle of love and hence is the foundation of His government in heaven and earth. If our hearts are renewed in the likeness of God, if the divine love is implanted in the soul, will not the law of God be carried out in the life? When the principle of love is implanted in the heart, when man is renewed after the image of him that created him, the new covenant promise is fulfilled. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. And if the law is written in the heart, will it not shape the life? Obedience, the service and allegiance of love, 
is the true sign of discipleship. Steps to Christ, page 60. We must have an increase of faith, else we cannot be renewed in the divine image and love and obey the requirements of God. Let the prayer go forth from unfeigned lips. Lord, increase my faith. Give me divine enlightenment, for without help from Thee, I can do nothing. Come in humility and bow before God. Open before the Lord your Bibles containing the divine promises. Take your position upon them. Make a covenant with God that you will answer His requirements. Tell Him you will believe without any other evidence except the naked promise. This is not presumption, but unless you work with zeal, unless you are earnest and determined, Satan will obtain the advantage and you will be left in unbelief and darkness. Councils on Sabbath School Work, page 72. For further reading, My Life Today, God Sees Me, page 291, and The Acts of the Apostles, Jew and Gentile, pages 188 to 200.